Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is How to Make a Game in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 32. So this episode we are going to pick up our gold bar right here, place in our inventory, finish up the quest and then we'll look at doing some voice acting. So to pick up this bar, firstly we need a trigger and I'm going to use a cube, nice and simple. Game object, 3D object, cube. So we just need to put this cube into position over the bar itself. Let's rotate it a little on the Y. There we go, that should do. And let's make it about 1.5 on the Z. In fact, have that as 2, I think, make it a little bit bigger. So the trigger object that we look at to pick the bar up is larger than the bar itself to give us plenty of room. Uh, turn off the mesh renderer because we don't want to be able to see that cube, do we? And I'm going to drag that cube up and place it, uh, where should I place it? Let's place it just above the gold bullion object there. Right, uh, sorry, F2, and let's just call it gold trigger. So to pick this up, we're gonna need the script. We're also gonna need an image in our inventory. So let's go to our textures, go to our inventory image, and I'm going to drag and drop this gold image into here. You can get this on the website for free if you head over there, downloads and assets on the Unity game tutorial series and download it from there, episode 32. So let's hold control, press D to duplicate, F2 and rename, and I'm gonna put underscore sprite. And the same we did with the others over here on the texture type, change it to 2D and UI and click on apply. So now let's set this up in our inventory. So I'm gonna double click on slot three here in the canvas. Uh, let's pan the camera around. So we want the gold bar to appear here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one here from slot two, hold control, press D to duplicate, and drag it into slot three, tick it so it's active so we can see it, and then zero out all of these here. So there we have it. It ends up in the center of this one. Nice and quick way of duplicating. F2, rename to get rid of that one so it's the same as slot two. And then we just drag and drop our gold image sprite onto the source image and untick to turn it off. So now let's double click on our gold trigger again to zoom in here. And now we need a script to allow us to pick up this object. So let's head to our scripts folder and in the quests and main quest, um, in fact, no, we're not going to do it main quest because this strictly isn't a main quest. Um, so right click, create JavaScript, and let's call it quest 002 gold. So this is going to be like the halfway point for this quest. Open it up in Modern Develop or Visual Studio. Uh, for those asking about uh, JavaScript and C Sharp, next episode or episode after, I'm not quite sure which one, we'll be doing some C Sharp because I want to show you guys how you can have multiple scripts on one particular item with different coding languages. So we'll start doing some C Sharp probably from the next episode onwards. So this script, we're going to need a couple of variables. Initially, we're going to have three. Uh, but we'll come back to this script in a couple of minutes when we need to finish up our quest. So the first variable is going to be the um, bar of gold itself. So the gold, and that's going to be a game object. Next variable is going to be the picture in our inventory. So var gold pick, and that is also a game object. And the third one is going to be this object itself. So var this object is also a game object. So the idea of what we're going to do here is this script is going to be attached to this trigger that we have as the cube. Um, when we click on this trigger, we want the box collider to turn itself off so we can't click multiple times. And then we need to put the gold bar in our inventory. So we're going to use function on mouse down, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we'll do this, oops, this object dot get component, and in brackets and quotes, box collider. Remember, it is case sensitive here, and it's all one word. Quote, close bracket, dot enabled equals false. So we're turning that component off. Next, we want to put the picture of our gold in our inventory. So gold p 
pick dot set active and that's true next we'll get rid of the gold bar itself so it is the gold dot set active that's also false and then finally you probably guessed it this object dot set active is false semicolon close curly bracket and save the script so now we need to drag and drop this script onto our gold trigger and hopefully I, you don't need me to explain this you guys should be way ahead of what we're doing now because you know we're on the 32nd episode so hopefully you should know what we're doing drag and drop the variables and let's give this a go and see if we can pick up the gold in fact you know what to make things that are a little bit quicker what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this door just so we don't have to go through the rigmarole of having to do the quest line. So let's start up and quickly run all the way over to our cave. So with a bit of luck, we should be able to pick this up. No problem. Fingers crossed. So head into the cave to the gold bar and there we go so at this point strictly what we'd be doing is heading back over to this npc here to finish up the quest so let's create that now so let's um let me think what's the best way of doing this i think if we just head over here i think i misspelled something there yeah you can see i've done the script a little bit wrong there it says Surat active, not set active. If you have problems with script or anything at any point, though, the correct working script will be on the website uh, with all the assets. So this guy here was the quest giver, if you remember rightly, the NPC 002. And we have quest idle, quest active, and now we're going to hold control, press D to duplicate. And we're going to call this one quest finish. So the script attached to this one is quest 002 start and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control press D duplicate that script and all I'm going to do with this is just rename it rather than retype the whole script we may as well just rename so finish so let's open this script up and quickly see oh, it's complaining again an error that's that's not very good is it Let's give it a minute. Okay, so let's open it up again. Yes, I know you stopped working. You would stop working right now in the middle of a recording. So, okay, let's open the script up and let's change what we need to. So quest 002 finish. The idea of what we're going to do is going to be exactly the same. So instead of, in fact, let's go down each of our variables here. So we can see text box on check, that's fine. Message box is fine. Text box fine. Quest box fine. Quest text is fine. Key 001, we need to change to gold bar. And we can get rid of the cave door variable. We don't actually need that. And as we go down on mouse down, text box on check, yep. So all we need to do is change this bit here to say servant. And let's have him say, Thank you very much. And then let's set the active quest as, um, what should we set the active quest as? What we had it previously. Um, okay, so we've asked them to retrieve the bullion. So I'll tell you what, let's just put um, on here, active quest, explore. We'll just have that for now. So as we go down here, key 001, let's change that to gold bar. Cave door, we can get rid of that line. We don't need it. And everything else should be fine. So we can save that script right there. So we're going to drag and drop this script onto the quest finish right here, which is fine. And then we just need to fill in these variables. So message box goes on message box. Text box goes on text box. So one thing I will point out here, I'm not sure if I pointed out before. 
If we click on an object in the inspector panel here, for example, this quest box, the variable we've already defined, if we click it, it highlights yellow for quick reference here in the hierarchy. So we can do that, make things nice and quick. So the gold bar is going to be the image in slot three. There we go. And now let's get rid of quest zero to start on there. So the last thing we need to do to get this quest fully working is on this quest uh, finish, we need that to be inactive, which it is, but then we need it to be active when we pick up the gold bullion. So on this gold trigger script, which is quest 002 gold, which is not open, so let's open it. Let's double click here and open. What we need to do is set another variable. So far, and let's have quest end as a game object. And then here, after the gold.setActive.false, let's put quest end.set active true and save. And then you probably guessed it. We just need to set that as a variable over here. So quest finish over there. And I'm going to save my project right there. So I'm going to keep that door um, as inactive just for now. But if you would imagine that we've spoken to the guy in here, we've got his loot. We've spoken to this servant first, which would make quest active uh, active. And we've gone and picked up the loot. So if you would imagine we're at that point now. Because rather than go through all of the quest just to kind of show one thing it seems a bit daft a bit of uh, time wasting as it were so imagine we've spoken to the guy he's given us the key we've just opened the door we've got our gold so let's go out and let's finish the quest now let's talk to this guy Uh, okay, so as we can see that because we've not actually followed the quest properly over there in the um, Hierarchy we can see that Idle Is right there, so it's active as well So I'm going to just disable that for now because that seems to be overriding this quest finish So let's finish up the quest. Thank you very much. Okay, so I notice at this point the gold bar hasn't disappeared out our inventory. So let's have a quick look if we've done this right. So let's have a quick debugging session, shall we? Uh, ah, there we are. Gold bar set active and in brackets false. There we are. So when we speak to our guy now, it will disappear. So rather than go through all that again, you have to trust me on that one. That's the reason why it didn't disappear. But there we go. So next thing, let's move on to some voice acting. So I'm going to double click on my first person controller and go over here. Uh, in fact, before we do, I may set that door as active on the cave. Um, let's have door active again. There we go. So the first person controller. Now, when we start, we have a couple of lines of text. So let's put that into some voice acting. And the way we're going to do that is if uh, we go to our audio folder, let's right click, create a new folder, and let's have just VA for voice acting. And I'm gonna keep everything neat and tidy. So I'm gonna have another folder within there called area 001. And within there, I'm gonna bring in these three lines. Now these three audio files are just three quick lines that I've recorded myself with my voice. Um, if you want to have them in your game, by all means do. You, you're free to use these if you want. There's no commercial rights to these. Um, and all, all they basically are is just what our character says at the beginning, which is, where am I? I need to get out of this wood. And it looks like there's a village over that bridge. So obviously, if you're making your own game, you would have your own voice on there or your own voice actors. I'm just merely showing you how the voice acting works in the scripts. So let's head to our scripts. Let's head to quests and main quest. And if we go to 001 quest, so this is the script that displays these text boxes. And what we're going to do here is add two variables to this one. So var line 001, and that is going to be audio source. And then var 
line 002, also audio source. So at the point where we say, where am I? We want our, in fact, I spelled audio wrong there. We want our guy to actually say it in the game. So we, just before that text appears, we would have line 001 dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon. And the same applies to, I need to find a way out of this wood. And that's line 02 dot play, open close bracket, semicolon, and save the script. What I think I might do is change that from one second to two seconds and change that to, in fact, I'll keep that as two as well. And I'll save the script. So now uh, we've already worked with audio before, so we know how this is going to work. We need to go on our first person controller and let's add in an empty game object, uh, F2, and let's call this <coughs> voice acting and then create empty in there. And let's have line 001. And you've probably guessed it by now, guys. Drag and drop line 001 there. Turn off, play on away. Hold control, press D to duplicate. Let's have that as line two. And yep, drag and drop line two there. And finally, to get that working, we need to go on our quest start, which is there and apply those two variables. I'm hoping you guys are ahead of me on this one. We've done it enough times. So let's save our project and let's check this out. Where am I? I need to find a way out of this wood. So there's the first bit. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, let's add in the third line, which is talking about a village over the bridge when we get there. So to do that, we need to go to our other script, which is the, I think it's the exit wood, isn't it? So let's do that. And I'm going to have the variable here. So var line 003, and that is audio source semicolon. And yeah, you've guessed it. Line 003 dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon, and save. And on our line 002, hold control, press D, change it to line 003, add in our line 3 audio, find the, um, there we are, yeah, find the trigger that activates it, and then add in the variable. Save, and let's try this one out. Where am I? I need to find a way out of this wood. So there we go. Hopefully this one activates Looks now. like a village over that bridge. Okay, so I didn't actually record that fourth line there saying I had better get across that bridge. I only did the first three lines to show you the process of how we would add in uh, voice acting. So it is real simple. All it really is is just a case of adding in your variable for your recording and then adding in the line to play the audio as the text is spoken. Uh, one thing to also note, um, in my script, um, this one, this is theoretically recorded as two separate lines, but it could be recorded as one to save space. Um, so you would have, where am I? And then you would literally have the recording wait for a second and then say the next line. But I've done it as two separate lines just to show you the process of how it's done. So that is how you add voice acting into your game. Nice and simple. So next episode, we're going to start looking at a couple of different things. We're going to look at some environmental designs. So we're going to add probably some wind zones, add a little bit more to our terrain. Uh, we'll start looking at weather effects. Um, and to be honest, I, th I'm, I think we're going to add in some snow. Maybe we'll have a snowy environment somewhere. Um, let's see, where can we have it? I'm thinking we could have it over here, maybe. We'll have some sort of snow environment. So we'll be changing a bit of sound effects as well. But the snow is going to be kind of cool when we get around to that. So guys, until the next episode, add in your voice acting, get your quest sorted, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.